What's up guys, this is Aragor again. I just got finished watching the World of Warcraft deep dive for BlizzCon Day 2. And I just wanted to uh, get my thoughts out a little bit before I watch the uh, Diablo 4 campfire chat in a little bit. I'll uh, I'll probably, I'll do the same thing for that after I'm done watching it and then I'll put these two together into one video. And then I'll probably uh, tomorrow I'll uh, put together a little more uh, structured, uh, complete thoughts video instead of like the quick off the cuff things I tried to do yesterday and today. So anyways, they uh, they talked about delves, which sound really cool. They're really interesting for people who who don't really like to do instanced uh, group content because it's like a uh, they're like a small one to five player group content that's out in the open world and it's intended as a uh, for people who just prefer to do open world stuff a way for them to progress through the end game and get some gear they even put it on the uh, they took pvp off of the great vault and they put delves in open world as the new track which is awesome because not only does it mean uh weekly loot for doing that content in addition to the loot you get from doing the content but uh tier set pieces can be in the great vault so this is a way for you to get the great vault even if you don't do instance content which is fucking awesome because getting um get getting uh getting tier set bonuses is super important not just not just for like a throughput thing because generally speaking if you're the kind of person that doesn't really care to do instance content you don't care that much about throughput but they change the way your class plays and usually in a very fun way. That's awesome. I really like that idea. I, I actually didn't expect it to be that kind of thing. I was mostly assuming it was just going to be something to do that might give some loot. So this kind of this this exceeded my expectations for sure. And apparently it's going to be uh, seasonal content. So every season we're going to have a new companion for our delves. And presum presumably we'll get a couple of new delves at least every season as well with new themes and stuff. They said that we're going to start out with 12 when the uh, when the expansion first comes out and we'll have a few in each zone. Uh, he actually said that there's going to be a 13th one that is coming at launch, but it's like hidden in the world and they want us to have to find it. So they didn't really want to talk about it too much. That's very interesting. I, I like having to find stuff like that. And then they talked about war bands, which is essentially account wide everything. It's it's uh so one of the big things is we're getting a war band bank, which is essentially an account wide bank. Can't complain about that. I mean that that's just huge because based on the screenshot that I got from it or that they put up on the screen, um you still have your personal bank for your character. So it's not like any, you're like losing any space. You're keeping the space you had, and then you also get your warband bank in addition. So you have even more space, and that makes it easier to transfer things between characters. And they said that they're, they have a new, um, a new type of bound item called a warbound until equipped item. So you can give it to your warband members until they equip it and then it's bound to that character. And then transmogs are also going to be account wide and they're not going to have restrictions anymore. So like the example Ian gave was you could be running an old raid on a mage and a plate piece drops and you get that appearance. It doesn't matter that the mage can't equip it, you still get that appearance. And then once you log on to your warrior, your warrior will have that appearance available for them to put on their gear. That's awesome. I love that, especially because like, I do enjoy doing transmog runs, but I always wind up uh, getting kind of put off from doing it because of the fact that I don't want to have to do it on like four classes just to be able to get everything. And then you have to hope that the item that you want drops on the right character that could actually use it. And then sometimes it drops on the other character and you can't, they can't use it. So you're like, that's the item I wanted. It's right there, but it does nothing for me. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Very good. 
They're also making, uh, we already knew about reputations and renown being account wide with the war bands. That's good. Um, they're doing flight paths, which I thought flight paths were already account bound. Maybe they're not. Oh no, that's right. You have to use the heirlooms. So it'll be nice to not have to, uh, use those heirlooms anymore. They're making Dragonflight the new leveling experience for, uh, I presumably 10 to 70. So that's neat. Um, they're going to make Evoker start at 10 now because of that. Uh, they went over the hero talents for a bit. Uh, they gave a few examples for Druids, like Druids are getting Keeper of the Grove and Elune's Chosen as two of the hero talent trees that are available to balance. Keeper of, Gro of the Grove is neat because it's like centered around your treants and like making them more powerful and, and buffing your druid up while they're out and stuff. That was interesting. And then Elune's Chosen is kind of more focused on your lunar spells. It was it seemed like it was very focused around uh, Fury of Elune in particular, which is if I, I don't play balance a lot, but I believe it's that um laser beam that comes down from the sky and like burns the target area over time it's like the an orbital strike essentially which is awesome i've always liked the aesthetic of that skill so having um having that be even more powerful if you like it a lot you can choose alone Elune's chosen and just make it more powerful and if that's if that's going to be the idea of the hero talents for all of the classes where it's it like takes one or two abilities or like one category of abilities and like really hone homes in on those abilities and makes them awesome that'll be sick and that's like exactly what we would want because then uh it, it's just a, another way to mold your spec into what you want it to be essentially and they did confirm what i thought yesterday which is that we we will get there's 10 talents and like three to four of them are choice nodes and you get all 10 by the time you hit 80. You get one talent point per level from 71 to 80 and at the end you have all 10 of them. Those choice nodes are where you get your choice, that and choosing which tree you use essentially. So there's a lot of choice still there, but it avoids the problem that the original uh, talent tree system getting another row or two every expansion, uh, it avoids the issues that had with like the bloat uh, they said the alpha is probably going to be in spring, which isn't too far away, so that's nice. Uh, Earthen are unlocked at the end of the War Within campaign. No rep associated with it. You just have to finish the story and then you get them. They have every class except for Druid, Demon Hunter, and Evoker, and that just makes sense. Those are the three classes to make that, that it makes sense they wouldn't have. Um, we don't know what the racials are yet. They're probably still working on figuring out what they want those to be. And then Dynamic Flight was confirmed to be everywhere. It's here to stay. Um, it's not just for dragons. Um, it's uh, it's coming for all of the non-Dragon Flight zones in 10.2.5 instead of when the next expansion comes. So that's earlier than I expected. I'm glad to see that. They said that it won't be available for every single traditional style mount but they're gonna get it for as many as they can and ian said that they already have like at least oh he said in the three digits already working with it so it's probably more of a matter of some of the models probably just won't work for like some of the animations that you have to do with dragon riding but the ones that do work they'll make work and they're also going to make it so that if you prefer uh, traditional flying or if you have a disability that makes it so that you can't really do dragon riding you can choose to do traditional flying instead which is a very good idea accessibility is always a good choice they're adding a new 10v10 uh battleground as well it's kind of kind of like silver shard mines which i usually like that battleground so that's nice to see they said they're also going to be adding more uh, with regularity going forward. So hopefully they stick to that. They've said that before and never really done it. So we'll see. And then they showed off a couple of interface updates, a new looking uh, spell book interface that's has it in the same window as the talent tree, just on a different tab. So you have the specialization tab and the talent tab that you already have. And then there's another tab for your spell book. So it's all nice and consolidated. 
And then they confirm that Cross Realm guilds are coming uh, day one of uh, War Within. And then whenever new raids come out, they just had day one Cross Realm Mythic raiding. Alright, so now with uh, Diablo, with the campfire chat, they, uh, they started out with the new expansion, Vessel of Hatred. They talked about the story a little bit. They just kind of reconfirmed that they're going to the Nahantu jungle. They uh, they confirmed that it is the same jungle from Diablo 2 where uh, Travancall and Karast and all that is. They just changed the name of it. Apparently, the uh, I, I couldn't quite understand what they said the original name was, and I can't seem to find it on, on any of the websites for some reason on like the wiki and stuff. But uh, they said that the original name and like the name of the peoples that live in that jungle was actually based on it's the, it's the same name as a a tribe of people or a group of people that exists in, in the real world. And they decided to change the name because they like to take inspiration from cultures, but they don't like to uh, lift them whole cloth from real from reality and put them into the game. So they they kind of did this neat thing where in in the actual lore of the world, people outside of that region know them as that name from real life, but the peoples themselves know the place as Nahantu, and they are like the Nahantu people. So that's an interesting way to explain it away too. So I like that. Um, they said we'll definitely be going back to the the actual same Karast docks from Diablo 2 and we'll be going to Travancall. I think I heard them say we're going to the Durance of Hate as well, but um, I wasn't quite sure. They reconfirmed that the new class is going to be something new. It's definitely not Witch Doctor. Apparently a lot of people were thinking, well, it could still be Witch Doctor. We're going into the jungles, but they confirmed it's definitely something new but they still wouldn't tell us what it is. So uh, I guess we're gonna have to wait probably a few weeks to a couple months to hear that. Then they moved on to season two, what they're adding in. Apparently this Tuesday, November 7th, they're going to be adding in those unique malignant rings that they, uh, that they unveiled yesterday that are bringing some of the malignant powers back. I assume you have to be in tier four or higher, but they didn't say, but they drop off of Varshan and Varshan's really, really easy to kill he dies easy and his materials are pretty easy to farm then they went on to talk about the uh the update that's coming on december 5th which is they're adding that uh enchanting preview to the occultist which is the same thing that we had in diablo 3 it just lets you uh once you select your affix it shows you what the possible results from re-rolling it are and that's just a nice little quality of life interface update and then in that same update, we're getting the Abattoir of Zir, which is a, uh, the way they, they, ha they actually had a neat little, uh, graphic for it, a flow chart. So essentially the way it's going to work is it's, it's scaled for after you've finished, you've gotten to level 100, you've killed Duriel and Uber Lilith, and you farmed a bunch of Uber uniques. Then you finish the final season journey, which gives you a recipe to craft essentially a key to the first tier of the abattoir. Then you go through, you clear the first tier, you get clearing the first tier gives you the recipe for the tier two key. It gives you a chance for the Paragon Glyph to drop the new Paragon Glyph. And it gives you a... Um, glyph upgrade totem that is it's like a they described it as an uber upgrade totem totem so it gives a ton of the normal glyph xp which makes sense because the new glyph goes all the way up to level 200 and then every tier you finish it it gets you a recipe to craft the next tier for the abattoir and then at that point, the rewards are, are just keep going. You, you have a chance to get the glyph every time until you actually have it. And then you get a ton of uh, glyph XP from it. So you can catch up all of your other glyphs and then start funneling into the new glyph. And uh, it goes up to tier 25, they said. 
And then the glyph that you get from it, it's the glyph of blood, I believe it was called. Tears of blood is what it's called. It starts at radius four, which is the same radius that level 15 of the normal glyphs are. And its radius goes up to five at level 50 and it goes all the way up to level 200. And for every five core stat within the the within range, you get 2% multiplicative damage increased. And then you get a, a baseline 50% bonus to all rare nodes within range. And the bonus increases by 10% every 10 levels. So that gets you a bonus of 250%. So this is an extremely powerful Paragon Glyph. This is going to be a huge power spike for pretty much any build. Like it's good for any build. And that's going to be a lot of fun to uh, that. Your, your character will definitely feel that power, which is nice. That's one thing that you, that they really need to work on with Diablo 4, which they talked about later on in the panel, is uh, making making your upgrades more tangible, feeling them more. Because right now, especially with like just like the affixes on gear, a lot of the times you don't really feel that much more powerful with them. So they're working on that. And then on December 12th, we've got that Midwinter Blight event coming. It's essentially just like a a big blizzard comes to the Fractured Peaks. And then there's a bunch of goat men with skulls, skull masks on their faces, dancing around like totems. And you crash their Christmas parties, kill a bunch of them. And if you kill enough of them and do enough events, then their, uh, their Santa Claus goat man shows up and then you kill him and you get... You basically do all this, you get a bunch of resource that you bring back to town and you give to the event NPC and you get cosmetic rewards. And then they moved on after that to season three. They're going to add more in game, the gauntlet dungeon with its leaderboard. It sounds pretty cool. It's like a weekly fixed seed dungeon, kind of like the uh, the challenge rifts in Diablo three. They didn't sit, they didn't make that com uh, comparison, but that's what it sounds like to me. But it's um, non-linear. So it it sounds like they're gonna design it in a way that uh, that makes it so that there's a bunch of different paths you can take through the dungeon to try and create your own most efficient path. And you have to kill things and open chests throughout it. There's no loot that drops until the very end, everything that would have dropped drops at the end. And instead you have these little um, items, these little pickups that drop that give you score. And the point is to get as much score as possible within the time limit. And then how, however much you score is where you place on the leaderboard. And you can just keep doing it as many times as you want to try and increase your score and place higher on the leaderboard. And then at the end of every week, the the, the gauntlet changes to a new gauntlet, the leaderboard resets, and then the top players on the leaderboard get immortalized in the Hall of Ancients. They didn't say how many of the top players, it could be top five, it could be top 10. They didn't say, that's probably something they haven't quite decided on yet. But um, that that's a pretty interesting system. Uh, I, I kind of like the idea of repeatable challenge rifts because challenge rifts were also, is like pretty fun. I mean, I'm not the greatest player in the world, so they were actually a little challenging for me sometimes, but it, it was a lot of fun to do. And uh, um, the the everything in the dungeon will be the exact same every time you do it for that same week. So everyone's doing the same thing. Monsters are all in the same places at the same enchants. The chests and loot and everything are in the same places. And the whole point is to just do it as 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 good as you can and be better than everybody else, essentially. So that 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 system will be interesting to uh, interact with. I definitely uh, I think that's cool. It, I have a feeling it's not quite what a lot of people are looking for in an end game because it sounds like it doesn't have a ton of loot, but it is supposed to have loot. So if the loot in it is decent and it isn't like super easy to completely uh, solve immediately and like the leaderboard competition is actually relevant then that'll be cool a lot of people all they need is a leaderboard and they're good to go they'll do that thing they'll compete with other people and they're set they also did a q a at the end of the panel 
Uh, most of the stuff was pretty small, but it, they confirmed that they, uh, they're they working on, or they want to make loadouts work for builds so that you don't have to constantly do undo and redo an entire new build every time you want to do some different content. They're, they're just not sure when it's going to be available. Uh, they want to improve the acquisition of Living Steel. The question was asked if, if Living Steel was going to be given out anywhere else other than Helltides. Joe Shelley didn't say th explicitly that they'd be available from other places. They just said that he's they want to improve the acquisition of it. So that could just mean making Helltides more enjoyable to do. I don't know. We'll have to see what they wind up doing with that. And then they, uh, they touched on the itemization that they want to do in the future a bit as well. But they didn't have a whole lot to share yet in terms of details. But they said they want to make it easier to compare items uh, so that you don't have to like sit there and crunch the numbers every time you get a new item to see if it's better. They want it to be a little more clear what's better than what. They want to also reduce the conditionality of the affixes, which is really good because I hate the conditional damage bonuses. It's a pain in the ass. You wind up only wanting to build around like if you're going to do damage to crowd control then you have to make sure you have some sort of at least like a permanent slow in your build or something and then you fight bosses and you you lose a lot of your damage outside of their break bar phases so that the, it, it just doesn't feel super great most of the time so i hope they do a good job of fixing that up they also want to make it more apparent what items are really good in terms of uh how it feels like when if you if you get an item and it's like a massive upgrade, they want you to be able to feel that difference when you put the item on, which essentially boils down to the affixes actually having more of an effect. They also want to add more ways for you to be able to modify your items, which will, I mean, that's always good. For people who want a really complex crafting system, they can play uh, Path of Exile, but that doesn't mean we can't have more to do. The enchanting is good, but it's it's not enough. It, we, we need a bit more, certainly. I'll definitely say that. And then they confirm that they're planning on getting the aspect crystals out of the inventory and into your Codex of Power. They just don't expect it to be ready for Season 3. And that's awesome. It'll be nice to be able to just put those in the Codex and save a lot of our stash space. We should really only be putting, in my opinion, gear into our stash that we want because that item might actually be an upgrade once we do like a little bit of rolling on it or something. Or, or filling it with uniques, that kind of stuff. Or having sets for different builds. Having our inventory full of items that we're just going to eventually shard to take the crystal is not really great. But yeah, that's about all I've got for you today. Day 2 of BlizzCon which it was, a, uh, it was a much smaller day. Only two panels I was actually interested in. But I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with a lot of what we saw today and yesterday. Uh, a lot of it, it, a lot of it is like the usual hype stuff. You know, you you get you get caught up in the hype when when announcements are being done. But we'll see how things uh, pan out over the next couple months. I think I think things are looking pretty good though. I am I am definitely feeling pretty hopeful after this uh, Microsoft merger. So this could be promising because like. I'm not naive enough to say that all of the issues with Blizzard in the last few years has been solely because of Activision influence, but it certainly doesn't help. And I would hope that this hopefully at least allows a bit more creative control on Blizzard's part. And when Blizzard has, has the ability to allow their employees to be creative, they really flourish because Blizzard has some insanely good talent at their company. And that just makes me a bit hopeful. But yeah, I uh, thanks for thanks for stopping by for my video again. I'm going to try and put something a little more cohesive together sometime tomorrow to just talk about uh, everything we saw this weekend a bit more at length. I uh, might... It'll either be tomorrow or the day after. I might take a little extra time to work on it to make sure it's good. These these two videos are a little uh, 
a little bit off the cuff. Not quite as structured as I usually like them to be, but uh, I do appreciate you guys stopping by listening to my rambling thoughts. This one went on a lot longer than I intended it to as well, but uh, I got a lot to talk about again. So uh, if you guys enjoyed hearing me ramble into your ear for over 20 minutes, I would appreciate it a lot if you'd like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and it helps you guys know when I've put another video up, which I'm going to try and do with more regularity. And yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Have a good day and peace out.